Sports Scene, Hampton Roads premiere interview show with Greg Bicaveras each Saturday from 10 a.m. to 11. And you look at that, 4-4 four and four at home, which is just average, 4-3-1 four, and one on the road. I mean, you're not going to win any games like that. They were not the same team after they beat the Packers, yet the Packers were a totally different team. Interact with Sports Scene on Twitter, at Greg Bick, and listen weekly as Greg interviews distinguished guests with excellent commentary and insight. Sports Scene, Saturdays at 10 a.m. on the Lighthouse 100.1 FM. When it comes to automobile service in Hampton Roads, Fink's Car Care is the destination locals have counted on for decades. Family owned and operated, they specialize in transmission service, oil changes, state inspection, radiator service, tires, alignments, and showcase win automotive products. Fink's does it all. Military and senior discounts are available. Like them on Facebook and visit them at 2711 Victory Boulevard in Portsmouth. For more, log on to Fink'sCarCare.com and call 485-5555 today. From Chesapeake, Virginia, the Lighthouse 100.1 presents Sports Scene. Sports Scene features local, regional, and nationally acclaimed guests and excellent interviews. Follow Sports Scene on Twitter at Greg Bick. Now here is Greg Bickaveras. Sports Scene, midweek online, Saturday in the radio from 10 to 11 on 100.1 FM, 1010 AM. Tune in.com, type in WPMH in the search bar to listen on the radio. Greg Bicaveras along with Joe Daniel. Sports Scene is an interview show. Also watch sports highlights on NNPSTV.com. Tell your friends about GJBTV.com and click the YouTube link on the homepage for archived audio and video. Twitter, at Greg Bick, at GJB Radio. And you can see the rest of my Twitter handles on GJBTV.com in the contact section. Thank you to our military. Guest lineup presented by Outback Steakhouse in Kempsville, now delivering. Sponsors on GJBTV.com, Marketplace Sponsors, Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. Phone line presented by Me Casita. Show presented by HRSMHOF.com. That's the Hampton Roads Sports Media Hall of Fame. World Series is going on. Falcons Redskins, 1 p.m. on Fox on November 4th. Parish Council elections at St. Constantine and Helen Greek Orthodox Church on November 4th. Make sure you vote for Greg Bicaveras. Great interviews, business segments, highlights, commentary. What teased me off? Thank you for making the habit to listen to Sports Scene Weekly. And we love our regulars, newcomers, and tourists. Stay tuned. When it comes to automobile service in Hampton Roads, Fink's Car Care is the destination locals have counted on for decades. Family owned and operated, they specialize in transmission service, oil changes, state inspection, radiator service, tires, alignments, and showcase win automotive products. Fink's does it all. Military and senior discounts are available. Like them on Facebook and visit them at 2711 Victory Boulevard in Portsmouth. For more, log on to Fink'sCarCare.com and call 485-5555 today. Catch up on archived editions of Sports Scene by going to gjbtv.com and clicking the YouTube image on the homepage. Now back to Sports Scene with Greg Bicaveras. And welcome back to Sports Scene right here on 100.1 FM, 1010 AM. TuneIn.com, type in WPMH to listen anywhere in the world. Every Saturday morning from 10 to 11, Sports Scene's the only remaining sports show from Red Zebra Broadcasting locally here in Hampton Roads. It's a pleasure to welcome from Channel 3, Adam Winkler. Had a lot of roots in Texas. We've had him on Sports Scene before. Adam, newborn father as well. Uh, congratulations again. Thank you very much, Greg. Always a pleasure to chat with you and uh, and get hit on the sports scene, and yes, uh, my, my duties expand far beyond uh, television and social media these days, as uh, my wife and I have a, a lovely little five-month-old son who is uh, certainly thrown our world upside down in a very good way. Because this time last year, we were talking more about your pets. And, uh, exactly. You, you we were lost... talking about the Cocker Spaniel. Right. You know, that, was, that, was, that was running our world, exactly. Yeah, yeah so... Wow. How quickly things change, right? Yeah, well, this is a lot better, of course, and this uh, you know could be a gift from you know your, your puppy that passed away, too. Of course, we give condolences, even though it's been a while, because uh, you can relate to that. People get attached to their pets like anything else. Absolutely, and it was it was uh, it was very interesting. Full full circle. He uh, uh, Connor Connor. We we joke. He's our, our five month old. He uh, he does some things like right now. He, he doesn't like to lay on his back. He has to roll over. Well, that's just like Oscar. You know, the dorky didn't like being on his back. So there are little things that he does. It's like, oh yeah, 
wonder if it's Oscar reincarnated, but hopefully when he's, you know, seven or eight years old, he will no longer be acting like a dog, Greg. Yes. All right, let's get right to uh, the sports scene right here with Adam Winkler. Um, Adam, so far we're in the fall. Let's, I guess kind of let's take it a little, your background, your roots. You've been here for several years. I know you're a big Astros fan. Of course, they made the transition from, you've seen it all, from the, the National League to the American League. They won the World Series last year. Not quite the uh, postseason they wanted this year. I tell you what, they uh, they were good out of the gate this year, uh, defending that title. And uh, I know a lot of us had high hopes. You bring in Garrett Cole. Obviously, you've got Verlander back. I mean, that starting rotation was uh, was just phenomenal. Jumped out to a big early lead in the American League West, but then just never really found their stride. There were various injuries, whether it was Correa, whether it was Altuve, McCullers went on the disabled list. They really weren't at full strength until the last couple weeks of the season, getting ready for that postseason run. Saw what they did against the Indians, a three-game sweep, something I didn't see coming. I thought the Indians would put up much more of a fight. But, man, you run into that Boston club, and it's been years since I've seen a team that complete. I mean, this Red Sox squad, Greg, I am just, I am still impressed with with the, the complete and total package they have and even against the Astros they really weren't playing their best their bullpen had issues um their the third base defense was a problem but they disposed of the champs in five games and I think we can already see what they're doing early on against the Dodgers here in the fall class yeah and you know we always talk about football weather on the home or in the road because football in November and December is dictated by cold weather usually or rain or something like that but you play in the northeast like Boston I mean you could tell there was a home field advantage and the Dodgers are used to playing you know Arizona or you know San Diego teams like that for the most part and this weather definitely you could see it made an effect I think so much of that had had an impact in games one and two just a handful of those Dodgers players had ever been at Fenway Park before and I don't care what you say Fenway Park has a nostalgia it affects you you walk out there you see the green monster the the fans in there are as passionate as it gets and there's nothing in the National League West that compares maybe a trip to Wrigley perhaps but Wrigley even has a different nostalgia than Fenway with the monster and uh, the fact that they didn't take pregame batting practice before game one. They only had that one workout day. I think you're exactly right. You you factor in the weather. You factor in the Fenway mystique, the incredibly difficult lineup you're facing. It was sort of the perfect home field advantage for Boston. And you know now you go back to L.A. where it's going to be 85, 87 degrees. The Dodgers have their workout out for them. It'll be much more comfortable surroundings but it ain't going to be easy i think they have to win game three of course we'll know more about by the time this airs but they have to win game three but like you said you know you got the mystique of the red sox they've won world series now they've had that pedigree it's not like they've never won before you got the cold weather you know you got the intensity of the east when they play the yankees and and tougher teams you know year round as well like uh Houston, and then of course you see the Dodgers. Their fans, for the most part, during the summer, the casual summer, laid back, strolling in. You see Mary Hart from Entertainment Tonight sitting on the front <laughs> row. I mean, it's just a different type of vibe and atmosphere altogether. It really, I mean, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't really have more polar opposites. I think it's perfect that you've got East Coast, West Coast, because that just starts, uh, you know, starting the process of of how opposite these squads are. I mean, I guess the similarities would be that they both have, you know, lefties as their top two, top two pitchers. But but that's about it. I mean, the Dodgers they they go about, you know, the way they do things, lineup wise, analytically different than Boston. And I, I, I tell you what, if I was a club, if I was a manager, a general manager, I would find a way to absolutely emulate what the Red Sox are doing. I mean, you win 108 games in that division, and then Greg, the the two out hitting in the postseason is just staggering. I just cannot believe how they continue to come through with two outs and runners in scoring position. I tell you what, it reminds me of the 2015 Royals team. I saw that team up close because I was at game four of the ALDS in Houston when the Strohs blew that six-run lead to that eventual world championship Royals team. That squad was relentless. You could not get them out. You couldn't strike them out. And then with two outs in the inning, they, they were like cockroaches. They just would not die. And this Red Sox squad reminds me so much of that Royals team. And obviously we know 
what came about with that Royals team. Yeah, the Royals, of course, won the 2015 World Series, and uh, of course they've had great teams in the past too. Back in the day with George Brett and those guys too. But like you said, team has been excellent from the jump. I mean, they have been game on from the spring all the way to the fall. And they really, I mean, they don't the lineup mostly homegrown guys. I mean, you have to be just oozing with pride if you're a Red Sox fan. And I know they had their what was it, almost 90 years, 86 years of misery, you know, since 1918. Well, they're, they're, they're a borderline dynasty now. This will be, what, their fourth World Series in, in a decade and a half? And that's almost unparalleled success in the majors here recently outside of, you know, maybe talking about the, the Yankees and the, the Giants who won three in six years. Their, their squad is just totally impressive. The starting pitching, I think, is, has overachieved when you look at a guy like David Price. A lot of people wrote him off for being being done. Porcello had a bounce back year. The bullpen, the Joe Kelly, Nathan Evaldi, who was a starter, he's coming out of the pen now throwing 100. And then, of course, Craig Kimbrell, it seems like he has solved his little postseason issues because he is, uh, he is back to the Kimbrell of the regular season. And as most of us know, that's untouchable. Talking to Adam Winkler from Channel 3, and we're going to mention a little bit of high school football before we save the good stuff for college and the NFL in the next segment. Um, we cover games in Newport News on TV, and uh, i got to say, this year for high school football, it just doesn't seem the fans of Hampton Roads are that into it. Is it mostly because of college football, the NFL, baseball? It just seems like the kids today, the generation, Adam, just switching subjects here, is more interested. If it's not on their phone, they're not going to go to the local event. And even at Old Dominion football games a little bit, you see a lot of fans still leaving at halftime. You know, I, that is one thing that, that still has me perplexed uh, in my now uh, three years here in Hampton Roads. I just don't understand why high school football games are not a bigger deal, why they're not a bigger draw. This area has so much pride in the athletes that come out of here, so much pride in the the Mike Vick, the Cam Chancellors, the guys that go on to do wonderful things at the college and pro level, but yet they don't go out and support them when they're at the high school level, when they're breaking in. I've heard stories, I've talked to talk to folks who tell me about what it was like when Percy Harvin played at Lansdowne. People would, would, would go out there. It'd be a packed stadium. Well, we've got a whole bunch of recruits, top 10 recruits, top 100 recruits nationally, guys that are going to be playing on Sundays in four, five, six years. But I don't know where the support is. I mean, outside of a couple of schools in the area, I'll give, uh, you know, I'll call them out specifically. I think Grassfield has great support. I think there's a couple of beach schools that have good support. Up on the peninsula, the Bay Rivers District, they've got great support. But like you talked about, you've got these these wonderful athletes, Newport News, Hampton, right in Norfolk, Maury, Lake Taylor. Where are the fans? Why is it not a bigger deal? And I, I think there's a there's a deeper dive that we could take, Greg, to find out exactly what it is. If it's about school spirit, if it if it's not cool anymore to be a to be a fan of your own school. I, I don't I don't know if the era has changed, uh, but you you bring up a great point. Uh, there's way too much talent. There's way too much high quality football being played here for the fans not to go out and support the games on Friday. And also, weather has something to do with it this year too. So I will give give you a pass there because this is what's going to be the fourth or fifth weekend we've had the schedule shifted due to Mother Nature. Right, and Friday night looks like it's going to rain. Uh, you know, tomorrow night really, really bad. So, but the thing is, I don't think it's just you know high school, but college too is the whole entertainment dollar the entertainment dollar in general that um, people are, you know, not going to as many movies or seeing stuff on, you know, different devices. But I guess you have to weigh that of the TV channel. If the fans aren't interested, how much do you show of that product? And that is, that is the number one gauge that sure. we, we use um, in our sports department. Our, our brand, to put it plainly, is we cover stuff that viewers care about. And if they don't care about we will find a way to give them a reason to care about it. So we're not going to go and, and, and run, you know, three and a half minutes of high school soccer highlights every Tuesday and Friday night. But you know what? If there's a compelling story on a high school soccer team, we will find that story, do that story, and give the viewers a reason to care. But you're exactly right. Folks around here eat, sleep, breathe, NFL. We are a top 10 market nationally in every national window for the NFL. It's abundantly clear the NFL is king. We do as much with the NFL as we can at Channel 3, obviously. We're the home of the Redskins, but it doesn't matter who's playing. 
viewers around here are watching. I think there's a big college basketball interest. If you look at the national ratings, the NBA draft, the Duke Carolina game, UVA hoops, there's a big interest there. But you're exactly right. You have to factor in what folks are caring about, what fans are, are using their dollars towards, whose jerseys they're buying, which games they're watching. The World Series around here isn't moving the needle as much as it did in 2016, and I think a lot of that had to do with the Cubs. The Cubs, a little bit more of a national brand, uh, similar to maybe the Yankees, similar to maybe the Cowboys. Cowboys numbers are great around here, uh, but you're, uh, you're exactly right. You have to factor that stuff in because, you know, like us, we've got 90 seconds of sports at 6 o'clock every night. We have to have to choose wisely, Greg. Right, because, um, you know, the military, you know, they, they probably don't care much about high school or even college for that matter. They're more about the Major League Baseball or NFL or even the NBA. We'll take a short break, come back more with Adam Winkler from Channel 3 after this. When it comes to automobile service in Hampton Roads, Fink's Car Care is the destination locals have counted on for decades. Family owned and operated, they specialize in transmission service, oil changes, state inspection, radiator service, tires, alignments, and showcase win automotive products. Fink's does it all. Military and senior discounts are available. Like them on Facebook and visit them at 2711 Victory Boulevard in Portsmouth. For more, log on to Fink'sCarCare.com and call 485-5555 today. The best guests appear here on Sports Scene. Now back to Greg in the Hampton Roads Online Mall.com studios. All right, welcome back. Talking to Adam Winkler, Greg Pick of Aris, at Greg Pick on Twitter. I've seen Adam not only locally, but I've seen him at the uh, Redskins games and the All Star game. That was truly an event. I think you and I were two of the only uh, locals here in general that went to the All Star game, but it was right in our own backyard in Washington D.C. That is not going to happen anytime soon, and I'm surprised more media from my area were not there. First of all, it was great to see you there, and what a wonderful event it was. Through the uh, the rain cleared out, but I mean, you're exactly right. I, I just, I mean, it is it is the Midsummer Classic. It's been played for nearly a hundred years, and I understand if it's in the middle of high school season or the NFL. It's in the middle of July. There's nothing else going on. And yeah. you have the biggest event in the world that day, three hours up the road. It made too much sense for us. We were there on Monday night for the home run derby that Bryce Harper eventually won and to get the workout day sound from guys like Justin Verlander. Uh, and then, of course, we were there Tuesday for the game that went down as one of the uh, the all-time classic midsummer classics. And, uh, and I know I've told you this before, but baseball has always been my number one sport. And uh, I remember... Not remember well, but I do vaguely remember the 1986 All-Star game played in Houston in the Astrodome uh, that my dad took me to. Uh, and ever since then, I've just loved the All-Star game. I don't know what it is. I think there's a lot that factors into that. But uh, it was certainly a, uh, a nostalgic moment for me. It was an enjoyable assignment. And uh, as far as work goes, it, it wasn't so bad. I'm sure you agree. Yeah, I happened to be in the dugout of the American League, so truly that was a wonderful, wonderful event. Whenever I needed a drink, I went down to their basement dugout, just opened the fridge, and got me a Gatorade. So, yes, it was a wonderful very night. Nice. It was very hot. It was a, it was a bucket list moment. And um, like you said, there was not a whole lot going on other than going to the beach or a vacation. What else are you going to do in the middle of a hot July Tuesday night? There's always inconvenience with travel, but that's let's face it, that's only a few hours up the road. Yeah, I mean, like you said, it'll it, it will never it will never be closer. It will never be closer. Right. And the Nationals obviously as a team, they won't be the same in twenty nineteen. They were the host city. Uh, let's talk about uh, closer to home. Uh let's talk about three of the schools here, at least or maybe four. You got Old Dominion, uh Wayne Mary, Hampton, Norfolk State, uh Virginia, Virginia Tech. Virginia is off to a great start. Virginia Tech has struggled. They lost a the game against East Carolina. It seems like it's been kind of like topsy turvy for tech. They're winning their games, but not the year they wanted so far. I think the Hokies sort of looked at this year, knowing that it would probably be the toughest of the Justin Fuente era. He uh, he had had some pretty good luck, pretty good, um, and avoided the turnover uh, his first couple years, and the records prove it. But this year, you look at the defense, I mean, they lost so many key pieces, whether it was to the NFL draft or to just attrition or to having guys kicked out of school, kicked off the program. Um, and I think, they're, I think that's shown a little bit. I, I don't think uh, the quarterback, Jackson, is playing as well as he did last year as a freshman. Uh, and I think the schedule has been a little bit tricky, but, you know, I, I think they are built for success. I think Fuente is, is incredible, I think, but Foster still is finding a way to uh, 
uh, you know, whether it's with duct tape and, uh, and bubble gum to, to put this defense together. And, and they're going to be in the mix in the Coastal like they are every year. But you're exactly right. I mean, you can't, you know, you can't lose games to, to Old Dominion um, and you can't get blasted by, uh, you know, I guess it was, it was Clemson or Notre Dame. Lost, you know, got blasted by Notre Dame. They're just not. They're not up to the level that you know the top ten, top fifteen caliber. But I, I do think Fuente will get them. Will get them there as long as he's there and Bud Foster there. Yeah, I mean, even for most teams, they would love two or three losses. But uh, that's not this year has not gone the way Tech wanted. UVA's played very well. Let's talk about Old Dominion. They got that lottery win. They got that Mega Millions win against Virginia Tech. But <laughs> but listen, you know, Adam Bobby Wilder said all year long, this is our most experienced team ever in ten years. He's the one who kept saying big things are going to happen this year. Well, nothing's happened this year other than they won the lottery, and that's been quickly forgotten. They had high expectations coming into this season because, like you said. They've had more depth than they've ever had before. So they had a more competitive offseason, a more competitive fall camp, and more experience. They had more seniors. I think the number was 20 seniors. They returned nine starters on offense. I think it was seven on defense. The expectations were to compete for the Conference USA Championship this year, let alone find a way to get the six wins. So you're here. You've got six losses already. And like you said, that Virginia Tech win will forever be talked about. And shoot, the win at Western Kentucky was another national story. The way they, they trailed by 10 points with 10 seconds left. Yeah. Or sorry, trailed by seven with 10 seconds left and won the game in regulation without an onside kick. Just unbelievable. But you're exactly right. It is. Bobby Wilder has never had back-to-back losing seasons. He is one loss away from having back-to-back losing seasons, and people are going to point to that Bahamas Bowl year, that 10-win year, as maybe the exception to the rule rather than the rule. That was billed as being the new standard. This team was going to go to bowl games annually, compete for for championships annually. Well, something has to change now. Unless you're going to rip off four more wins, find a way to get to 6-6 six and six and get to a bowl game, which would be a heck of a comeback, and credit will be given where credit is due, you're staring at another long offseason uh, of, of figuring out what went wrong. I mean, you had you had the 10-win the season, the magical Bahamas Bowl year, and then and then what? What are you, you going to do with it? How are you going to build off that momentum? Back-to-back losing seasons? That's not good enough. Exactly. Like you said earlier, too, they got those wins. They're both almost like circus-like wins, but that shows you in the body of their work they have not been consistent through eight games. They need four more to get to 500. But I'll say this, too, about the novelty. Yeah, they're they're talking more about season tickets. They're going into a new facility, a revamp facility in 2019. A losing record is not going to help during the offseason for that is all. And, um, you know, it's Facebook, the social media, the fans there have not been exactly warm and fuzzy to Old Dominion football. And you're exactly right. And I think that's a sign of this program growing is you want to compete with the big boys. You want to be one of three, soon to be four, I guess four, if you, if you do count Independent Liberty, FBS programs in the Commonwealth. You're, you're not going to be on the same level as these as these FCS teams. You're, you're going to be held to a higher standard. And the fact that the Old Dominion fans are getting restless, the, the fact that, that they are unhappy with the lack of produ- of progression, rather, from that 10-win season, I think that shows how far the program has grown. It's not just about a, a social event on Saturday. Hey, we we have a football team. We They want to win, and, and you're, you're making the investment in your coaching. I mean, Bobby got a big raise after that Bahamas Bowl year. His entire staff got raises. You're putting the, the money into to the stadium. You're bringing in marquee opponents. Well, it's time to see some results bowl games, compete for championships. So you're right. The, the, the fans on social media are showing their, their disappointment, and I think that's a good sign for the program because people care. People are holding you to a higher standard, and now it's time to live up to it. Totally. And, of course, uh, the fans still kind of novelty. They don't like the hot. They don't like the cold. They like to leave early. But, um, you know, after a while, the players feed off that energy, too, Adam. You know, they, they don't like it when, you know, they get an energy drainer in the third quarter and it's half empty. You know, it's, it's, it's not good. These are kids still, and kids are up and down to begin with. And the fact that they have been around and they've played at places like NC State and they've played at Virginia Tech and, and they've played these in these marquee arenas, they know what a, a true home field advantage is. They know what kind of a difference a, a, a fired-up crowd can make. I thought the crowd played a factor into that Virginia Tech win. The fact that the fans believed in ODU that they could do it, I really think made an impact in that upset. But you're exactly right. You, you need the fans there and if you're losing the game, home games to teams like 
FIU, you know, you're, you're not going to gonna do a good job of getting the fans out and getting them excited about your product. So uh, it's on Old Dominion, big homecoming game Saturday. If they can find a way to beat Middle Tennessee for the first time ever, like they beat Western Kentucky for the first time ever, I think they'd have a shot at getting to six games because the back end of the schedule is incredibly easy. But Saturday, that's a big one. It's at home. It's homecoming. This is exactly what we're talking about, Greg. These are the games you have to win if you want to prove that the program has taken a step. Adam, leave us with all your social media and how people can connect with you on Twitter. I guess that's your primary uh, method. That's right. Twitter uh, Twitter handle is at Adam Wink Sports, and uh, obviously with Channel Three, we uh, we have sports every night at six, ten, and eleven. You can find all of our content at wtkr.com. And uh, always a pleasure to to chat with you and, uh, and catch up on. What's going on here locally? I always look forward to running into you at FedEx Field, too. Yeah, and I'll say this to the fans, too, out there. Don't underestimate, folks. It's a grind for people that have to do this five to seven days out of the week. You need two or three people on your team to do it, producers, camera people, because you know as you get older, your responsibilities change, and you don't have a chance to have 20 eyeballs on 20 different things all the time. Absolutely, and we, uh, we are lucky in our Channel 3 Sports Department. I've got a, a right-hand man, Mitch Brown. Uh, we are the we are the sports team. So, uh, like you said, especially during football season, makes for makes for some long days uh, because it's just the just the two of us. But uh, we each get to wear the hat of producer, photographer, anchor, reporter, and and you know how it is during you know it doesn't feel like work during during football season. Maybe sometimes driving driving home down sixty four at, at at one in the morning after a late Redskins kick, you might might remind you how long of a day it is, but. But we enjoy it, and we're uh, we're fortunate to be able to do it. Let me ask you one more thing before we let you go. Have you noticed a difference as far as your guys' schedule, the news team schedule, without Thursday night football? Because CBS had it for a good while, and that uh, that did block up a lot of airtime on Thursdays. It did, and it was it was so weird because you know you try because uh, I've always I've worked at a CBS affiliate randomly all fourteen years of my career, um, so it's always been been part of my day. And they tried to launch Thursday Night Football and tried to get, you know, we were doing our 6 o'clock sportscast live at a local bar, but the kickoffs are so, so late, and there's no pregame show until really 30 minutes before. And the games, if you remember, those first couple years, they were terrible. It was like Mm -hmm. Bill Dolphins. Well, now at the Fox package, they've got some marquee games, and I know that was part of of a negotiating chip because some of these Fox Thursday games, have been incredible. But to answer your question, what I do on Thursdays now, what we do, I should say, we basically assume that all the NFL fans are going to be watching Thursday night football on Fox. So our Thursday night shows are primarily high school and they're primarily college to try and basically counterproduce against the NFL because those Thursday night games have gotten so good and they have gotten so much interest. And it was nice when we had them because we could come out of the Thursday night broadcast into the 11 o'clock news and hope to have a little bit of an NFL audience. Uh, so it certainly has changed. I do get home earlier on Thursdays, which is, <laughs> which, which is nice, but we would, we would always love to have NFL football in our air. Very good. Adam, all the best to you, your wife and your kid and uh, your family. And we'll look forward to talking to you soon. Greg, thanks as always. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. My pleasure. Adam Winkler right there from Channel 3. And uh, Joe Daniel, nice to get a perspective from uh, a newborn father as well. You know that experience very well, having two kids of yourself, that you're juggling a lot of different duties. Yeah, absolutely. It's a lot. It it definitely, like he said at the beginning of the interview, it's a completely different shift and it turns your world upside down and always for the good, but it is completely different and it's, it's a great different. Sports scene will continue after this. When it comes to automobile service in Hampton Roads, Fink's Car Care is the destination locals have counted on for decades. Family owned and operated, they specialize in transmission service, oil changes, state inspection, radiator service, tires, alignments, and showcase win automotive products. Fink's does it all. Military and senior discounts are available. Like them on Facebook and visit them at 2711 Victory Boulevard in Portsmouth. For more, log on to Fink'sCarCare.com and call 485-5555 today. Catch up on archived editions of Sports Scene by going to gjbtv.com and clicking the YouTube image on the homepage. Now back to Sports Scene with Greg Bicaveras. 
And welcome back to Sports Scene. I want to thank our good friends at Sakura Japanese Restaurant, Sushi Bar, Takeout, and Dine-In. They deliver through orderup.com at the Walmart Way Crossing in Chesapeake. Give them a call at 410-4577. It's a pleasure to welcome Mick Mixon, the voice of the Carolina Panthers. We've had him on Sports Scene forever. Also, he is on Channel 13 during the fall for preseason games for the Panthers here locally in Hampton Roads. How are you, Mick? I'm great, Greg. It's great talking to you. It makes me harken back to my time in minor league baseball with the main guides in 1987. We stayed, when we played the Tidewater Tides, we'd stay at a hotel called the Admiralty, and there was a restaurant there called the Great Steak, G-R-A-T-E, and you would pick your own beef out of the case and yeah. cook it, and the garlic bread, butter, unlimited salad. I mean, it was it was incredible, so I'm making myself hungry by talking to you now. That was a great restaurant. Unfortunately, it's no longer there, but um, we went there several times. The only thing I didn't like about it was you had to make your own steak as opposed to being served, but it was still a novelty and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I loved it. It's good hearing your voice. The Panthers are playing. I don't know if I'd say we're playing well. We're kind of hanging in there. We're surviving, falling behind in the last two games against the Redskins and and, uh, Philadelphia and you know, barely beat the Giants with a 63-yard field goal late. So I think the best is yet to be for this club, but it would it would sure would be nice not to have to come uh, screaming back in the fourth quarter like we had to do to win against Philadelphia. Yeah, I saw you just recently a few weeks ago at the Redskins game, and that was a very close game. It seemed like when the Panthers were ready to put it on with Newton and Olsen, they got it going, but it just doesn't seem like there was enough firepower to sustain for four quarters to get a comfortable leader margin. Well, sometimes in sports, uh, you do it to yourself. Against the Redskins, the Panthers had some friendly fire with two turnovers and just being generally kind of loose with the execution. To to the Redskins' credit, they capitalized on that. But in the Eagles' case, the Eagles were just they were just very very good. I mean, for three quarters, it was seventeen to nothing at the end of three quarters. And I turned and said to Eugene Robinson, our our color analyst on the radio network, I said, "Doesn't it?" It feels like it's 34-0. to zero. I mean, and he said, I know, I know, I agree. So part of that was what the Eagles did to the Panthers, and that game remains one of the wildest things I've ever seen in sports, that the Panthers were able to, uh, to get it dieseled up and somehow win that game and stun that Lincoln financial field crowd like that. It really was special, too. It shows you how important everything is, offense, defense, and special teams all together. And you look at the uh, the Redskins beat the Panthers 23-17. to The Panthers came back and beat the Super Bowl champs, the Eagles, 21-17. to They're staying in that area, Maryland, Philadelphia, because they got, of course, the, uh, the Ravens this week. And I saw them take on the Saints, almost beat the Saints. Of course, the Saints are a different team away from the Dome. But regardless, even without Ray Lewis some six years later, the Ravens' defense is still very, very good. Yeah, I watched the first half of that game yesterday on NFL Game Pass. I'm getting ready to rack up the the second half. And and even knowing what happens in the game, it was uh, even knowing the final score, it's still unbelievable theater in that game. The Saints squeeze off a 20-play 10-minute drive to open the game and get no points because they fumble on the three-yard line. The Ravens score right before halftime to kind of get back in it. That Raven defense is so, so salty, especially that front seven, and it's almost unfair. I mean, in that their 3-4 scheme, sometimes it looks like there's 15 defenders out there milling around. Absolutely, and you talk about the the Panthers. Regardless, Mick, um, they'll take that four and two record at home going against the uh, the Ravens, who are kind of reeling right now after that loss. I guess so. The Ravens may be reeling with Justin Tucker having missed that extra point. Interestingly enough, in that game against the Saints, Tucker's first extra point barely made it through. It sailed right over the right upright and just, I mean, by a fraction of an inch was ruled good, not reviewable. If they had a looked at it, they might have taken a second look at whether that was good. So, you know, with hindsight being what it is, I'm listening to Chris Myers and Daryl Johnston call that game, and I'm thinking, man, you guys are talking about Justin Tucker, how accurate he is, and he is all day, all career accurate, but he, he's going to miss one later that will be expensive. What do you think, Greg, about the, the way the Ravens lost that game? Do you think they'll be a, a, a more angry, determined opponent for the Panthers this Sunday because of, of how they let that Saints at least a chance in overtime get away? That's the beauty of football, Mick, as you know. It's once a week you have plenty of time to process. They can't go in to Carolina, who's also hungry, and have anger in them. They have to play loose. They have to play Ravens football and just uh, act like that game did not even exist. You have to have a short memory because you win games like that most of the time, but you can also lose them. What hurt the Ravens were is they lost the game at home. That hurts even more. 
How's Flacco been playing? He's been playing very well. Um, I think the whole situation with the uh, backup quarterback from Louisville coming in and giving him some relief. At first, he didn't like it, but uh, lately, it seems like it's been gelling pretty well, and um, you know, the two have been playing pretty well together. Flacco's consistent. He is what he is. He's in his 11th year. He He's not the most mobile person in the world, but you know he's good for a few hundred yards, maybe a touchdown or two. Well, he's averaging almost 300 yards a game exactly. passing. He uh, certainly has the, the numbers to back him up, but it looked the, the broadcast crew on the Saints game was saying that Flacco's had a problem with passes being batted down. Some of the under, underneath stuff's getting batted down this year. Have you seen the same thing? I've seen a little bit of that, but I think that's always been an issue with him. I just think that's because he's not the most mobile quarterback in the world, and he doesn't move well out of the pocket. Yeah, he's big, he's tough to get down, Mick, but his speed is not great, and he's getting older as well. Well, th- we all are, I guess. But, yeah. Um, yeah, that but that Ravens defense and the speed of some of those receivers and just watching John Brown run. He caught a deep dig late in the first half, took it for 56 yards. I don't know how the Panthers are gonna gonna have an answer for him in the back end. Yeah, it should be an interesting game. We'll find out, of course, but I think it's going to be a interesting game as well against uh, the Panthers for the Ravens. They, like I said, they have to put that game behind them. But I will say this, you know you know this because the Panthers are on national TV a lot, whether it's been NBC or ESPN or, or, or of course, upcoming on the Thursday night Fox or in the past CBS schedule, is that NBC, I'm sure, wanted that Ravens-Saints game because it was so dramatic. It was so close. It was a 405 game, pretty much a regional game because the NBC game that night featured the Bengals and the Chiefs, and that was a blowout before the first half started. So it just shows you it's hard to pick these flex games. Yeah, I, I thought maybe the Panthers and the Ravens would get a uh, move to a late afternoon game because of both teams having winning records and coming off of, uh, of exciting games. But I try not to uh, coach the team or the national media from the broadcast booth, although it's not the worst idea I ever heard sometimes. No, no, definitely. Well, talk about the uh, remaining schedule coming up, of course. you got the Buccaneers, you got the Steelers, so it's never an easy week in the NFL. Panthers got two in a row at home, Ravens and Bucks. Then we go on the road for four of the next five with road trips to the Steelers, the Lions, Buccaneers, and Browns. We host Seattle in, in there. So November, early December, like for most NFL teams, it's going to be the, you know, those are the harder holes on this course. And hopefully we can make a few pars and maybe even a birdie or two along the way. You have a 10-day break, though, after the uh, the Steelers game until the 18th. It seems like we're not hearing as much controversy, Mick. Maybe it's me. I don't know about Thursday night football this year. It's never easy for the players. They're used to Thanksgiving playing three games on Thursday night. But I don't hear as much drama this year about Thursday night so far. Well, the games have been a little better, so that I think that fuels – some of it. I think the Panthers will probably end up going to London next year. We're one of three teams that hasn't been. We got F.A. Obata on our club who's from there, who has had some splash plays at, at a DN. So I predict that on our schedule next year, there's that London trip mixed in somewhere. Right. We're talking to Mick Mixon right now, folks. And just as you know, the NFC South Saints are always dangerous at 5-1. and one. The Panthers 4-2. and two. Tampa Bay is 3-3. Three and three, And Atlanta's 3-4. And, and I tell you one thing, I wouldn't count out Atlanta for nothing. No, me neither. I was hoping the Giants could do enough to beat them Monday night, but it wasn't to be. I think the Saints are figuring some things out on defense, getting a few more uh, people back healthy, and that's that's scary for, for the Panthers and the Saints and the Bucks. What's surprising to you so far with the rest of the league, Mick? I mean, look at the Redskins. They got a new quarterback for them, not a not a rookie quarterback by no means in the NFL. And, of course, they're 4-2. and two. The NFC East is really struggling this year. And Minnesota, you know, Kirk Cousins, the former quarterback for the Redskins, has got them playing just as good as anybody in the NFC North. True that. I'm really surprised at Buffalo. I thought the Panthers were at Buffalo in the preseason. And even though the first unit didn't play long for either team, I, I thought, man, Buffalo, coming off a winning season last year, they got a good crew. Their defense was very good, and, and that young quarterback can function. So I'm surprised at the struggles that they've had. It's been interesting to watch the Bengals, to watch the Browns this year, to see what the Jets are doing. Uh, the Rams continuing to play well. The Patrick Mahomes story reverberating all over the league. 
been fun to see the Steelers and the and the and the Le'Veon Bell drama play out. I mean, I I think it's NFL football is just in, insane how close these games are, how how unpredictable it all is. It's fun to watch, but it can be stressful. Right, not to mention the Raiders drama. You know, going to Vegas and also Gruden off to a shaky start. They're more. It seems like now as the year goes on, they're more thinking about 2020 than they are 2018 or 2019. And, of course, the Chiefs, like you and I were talking about, and, of course, uh, I feel bad for the 49ers. I mean, they just can't get a break. They had a bad year last year. Then, of course, Garoppolo came back on toward the end of the season, and now they're off to a 1-6 and six start, which, you know, you can pretty much tell who's NFL playoff bound or have an idea already. Yeah, and uh, there's also, you know, Seattle's, Seattle's dealing too with what with what used to be that only a few pieces remain from some of the great Seattle defenses and the, and the team that won one Super Bowl probably should have won a second. Absolutely. All right, Mick, uh, you, you are a longtime voice of the Carolina Tar Heels, of course, with the late Woody Durham. Give us a Woody story, and of course, you know that's where I first connected with you. And of course, I used to always hear you driving back from Chapel Hill to Newport News talking about how great Granville Towers were. The place to be at UNC, and I know because I lived there. My, um, I didn't grow up in the Great Depression, but my dad tried to simulate it at 2313 Honeysuckle Road. So he told me that you can take as long as you want to to graduate college, but the financial assistance from your mom and me will be eight consecutive semesters. So my college was over and done in a flash, but I loved every second of it, and I used to listen to Woody Durham call games. I worked at WCHL, the flagship station on the Tar Heel Sports Network. I started working there when I was 15. I used to ride my bike to work. You know, the parents wouldn't let you do that now, but I'd ride my bike through the woods, get you know sort of a bad look when you're showing up for work and you're all muddy and you got beggar lice on your pants. But I had the lead in my pencil. I really wanted to do it, and then to work with Woody later in my life was a great honor. I learned so much from him. He was superstitious, though. He believed that there were metaphysical forces that would tug at the basketball, that would nudge the football if Woody was wearing his lucky necktie or if he had his four-color pin that he used to keep score in the game that, that, that with that pin the Tar Heels had won three in a row so nothing would do but that he have his four-color pin to, to, to call the next game and uh, I always thought that was kind of nutty but that's the way Woody was. Yep, several decades of greatness on the air, and you work right with Woody Durham. Mick, all the best to you against the uh, Ravens this week and the rest of the season. It was a pleasure to visit with you in the snack bar at the Redskins media room a few weeks ago, and always great to visit with you here on the radio. My pleasure, Greg. I appreciate it, as always. Thank you. Mick Mixon right there, the voice of the Carolina Panthers in the NFL. Joe Daniel, it's always great to get great guests like that who have called NFL games and who have seen it from a great seat in the press box and who give our audience here in Hampton Roads a taste of it. Yeah, absolutely. Always having a great uh guests to be able to provide their perspective, their wisdom, their experience. I mean, only the best on sports scene, you know, to be able to provide our listeners um, great insight on everything sports. I want to thank our good friends at C.P. Shuckers, Locals Tradition, Shore Drive, Pacific Avenue. People love their delicious food, great appetizers, steak bites, excellent soup, salads, sandwiches, burgers, all the games on TV. Go by and see Matt, Mark, and Chef Leon. For more, go to cpshuckers.com. Like them on Facebook. When it comes to automobile service in Hampton Roads, Fink's Car Care is the destination locals have counted on for decades. Family owned and operated, they specialize in transmission service, oil changes, state inspection, radiator service, tires, alignments, and showcase win automotive products. Fink's does it all. Military and senior discounts are available. Like them on Facebook and visit them at 2711 Victory Boulevard in Portsmouth. For more, log on to Fink'sCarCare.com and call 485-5555 today. Are you a Christian business owner or an aspiring Christian entrepreneur? Do you want to transform the marketplace in your community? Then it's time for you to discover B2B groups. Small group Bible studies that meet regularly to study what the Word of God says about business and to encourage one another with God's powerful wisdom for our lives and businesses. To learn more about joining or starting a group, visit blessedtobless.net. That's blessed, the numeral two, blessed.net. Interact with Sports Scene on Twitter at Greg Bick. Email B I C O G B at hotmail.com. Now back to Greg Bickavaris in the Hampton Roads Online Mall.com studios. It's now time for Greg's highlights presented by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. 
Sports Scene is online on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Saturday on the radio from 10 to 11 on 100.1 FM, 1010 AM. Tune in.com, type in WPMH in the search bar, Saturday morning, 10 to 11. Always archived on YouTube. Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. Bookmark it, gjbtv.com, hrsmhof.com. Always a pleasure to bring sports scene to our great audience online and on the radio. Question presented by Buffalo Wild Wings and Newport News to Joe Daniel, our producer. Joe Daniel, what is the one chore you dislike the most? Other than just yard work, laundry. I really, really hate doing laundry. It's the folding. Like I have no problem obviously taking my dirty clothes to the washing machine and then putting them in the dryer. Not a problem with that. It's just when you take them out of the dryer, they just sit in my laundry basket for days. And I'm guilty of even weeks probably. Uh, They just sit there and because I hate folding laundry. I've been getting better at it. uh, And I've just been putting on like podcasts in the background and listening to podcasts or throwing something on the TV or something and watching while I do laundry. And it definitely helps. It takes a lot longer to do it, but it, it at least gets done. Laundry, trash, yard, all are bad. I agree. Sports scene will continue after this. When it comes to automobile service in Hampton Roads, Fink's Car Care is the destination locals have counted on for decades. Family owned and operated, they specialize in transmission service, oil changes, state inspection, radiator service, tires, alignments, and showcase win automotive products. Fink's does it all. Military and senior discounts are available. Like them on Facebook and visit them at 2711 Victory Boulevard in Portsmouth. For more, log on to Fink'sCarCare.com and call 485-5555 today. You are listening to Sports Scene with Greg Bicaveras. Now, back to Greg. Our good friends at Outback Steakhouse in Kempsville, they're now delivering. Mike and the staff have a spacious, nice dining area, great for lunch, dinner, late night. Excellent burgers, steaks, soup, salads, appetizer, seafood, pasta, chicken, ribs, all the great food, desserts as well. Book your holiday party at Outback Steakhouse in Kempsville. Give them a call at 523-4832 and visit them at 1255 Fordham Drive in Virginia Beach today. Well, we've had this gentleman on Sports Highlight, Sports Scene, several times throughout the year. They just had their big event about a month ago in Hampton. Let's welcome back Craig Cole from the Hampton Cup Regatta. How are you, my friend? Hey, Greg. Yeah, uh, we're doing well. Had some time to decompress after our event. But, yeah, like you said, we had an awesome event this year. Uh, Weather cooperated. We had some great crowds. We had a tremendous boat count this year. Uh, just uh, positive all the way around. Every day, every fee- all the feedback we got from all of our vendors, uh, city council members that came out and uh, watched races with us. We had new fans, old fans, uh, just a great event all the way around. It certainly was a great event, too. Like you mentioned, uh, the weather was good because, uh, as you know, you were sandwiched right there between a couple of hurricanes, too, Florence and Michael, <laughs> that uh, the the goodness of the man upstairs kept everything dry, well, no pun intended, for the uh, weekend that you had your event. Yeah, yeah, we uh, we, we, we were right there, uh, spread the eye of the needle, so to speak, Um but yeah, we never we never like to try to think about that too much. We always sure. look for great weather, no matter what time of year. We we're you know our old time back in August or these new times in September. Uh, we just look for a, a great time, no matter what. Because um, we want to you know look for our uh, spectators and our participants and everybody, everybody all the way around to have a good time. And uh, that mood in September just seems to be working well for us, and we're going to continue that. Uh, you know, our 2019 date we've already set. That's going to be uh, September 21st and 22nd next year, and uh, we'll have our kickoff party like we've been in the past couple of years on the 20th at Oozlefinch. I tell you one thing: walking around, I brought a couple of my friends there with me. I went there for for both days. I saw smiles in their faces. I saw, like you mentioned, young and old. Everybody seemed like they had a really good time and were treated to really some quality racing. Oh, yeah, our, our racing, uh, by all means, this year uh, was above board, uh, above our standards that we usually set for, uh, pretty high for ourselves. And uh, that was no uh, small part due to our uh, larger boat counts and our some of our higher-end, higher-speed boats this year. Uh, you know, we had our Grand Prix back this year. We were tickled to death to have those folks back with us. Uh, we had a good field. I think we had five Grand Prix at the racing with us this year. And uh, and those boys put on a show like no under uh, no other. Uh, you hear those guys uh, start up, and you can hear that rumble all the way across the water. In fact, I was standing there in our hospitality area uh, when they were getting ready to start. I was talking to somebody, and I heard the engine start off, 
And I actually uh, took a moment. I looked at the sky because it sounded so much like thunder. I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Grand Prix is getting ready to come out, guys. Y'all, y'all taste the water, and you're going to see a show. Um, and then, uh, you know, on the other end, I always want to give kudos to our, our younger racers, our J-Stock uh, boys and girls. Uh, they got out there and put on a good little show for them. And those guys run a little slower. They run about 40 miles an hour. But those are the 9- to 14-year-olds, uh, boys and girls, out there running. And those are our next generation. And uh, and we did have one of them uh, turn a little too tight, and they went to the creek. But uh, we fished them right back out. And uh, and that young man jumped right back in his boat, and he was ready to keep going. And I know we got a future racer there. And uh, we actually had a um, – uh, Johnny Orlando, one of our younger racers, actually just speak. That was his second year coming out, and I think his, he's hooked. His mom told me they're going to be looking around and buying him a permanent boat that he can be out at any race that uh, next coming season. So uh, get all the way around from one end to the other, our uh, bridge spectators down our boat count and our pits, uh, everything came off without a hitch, and uh, we just are looking forward. We're already planning for next year. Yeah, I tell you one thing, you know, you mentioned the kids and women and men. I mean, not many sports can say that, Craig. No, no, and that's one thing we're all we're real proud of. I mean, we're, we love to see everybody come in. I mean, some of our best racers are some of the females, some of the girls that are coming in, young women. Uh, they're, they're kicking butt. I mean, and we had our uh, APBA driving school uh, boat out this year that uh, Team Newman helped bring up, uh, bring, I should say bring down from Ohio. And Tony, one of the instructors, actually told me last year, and they, I think they had about a, a 12 or 13 folks come through, and five of them were uh, females, and they, they outperformed the guys. So, I mean, this is a sport anyone, literally anyone, can step into or sit into, I should say, with the boats and, um, and join in and participate and, and become a champion. Very good. Talking to Craig Cole from the Hampton Cup Regatta. What else stood out for you, Craig, for the weekend as far as uh, the sponsors, the vendors, or just the overall racing and atmosphere? The overall event, uh, Greg, it's hard to put my finger on one thing, but one thing I I always like to uh, see is everyone come together, working as a team to put on this event. I mean, everything from the pre-planning to execution to our sponsors, um, our city council, they, we always love to see them come out. They, they want to see uh, everybody who's out there, um, everybody on the back, uh, on the back side of things that folks don't see uh, over there in the pits, running the pits. Um, our Jeep club to come come through uh, and help be our tow vehicles around for the uh, for the boats, bring around the cranes, the cranes themselves. Just all the logistical support from the city, the electricians, the roadway people, the uh, our our. Tremendous uh, folks at Hampton Police Department out there helping us out, uh, keeping everybody safe and, you know, addressing any issues that we may or may not have had come up. Uh, But just everybody coming together, just put on this event. It's a community event, and it's just awesome to see the community come together and put it on. And, again, it's my hometown. I I am thrilled to death, and I am so proud to be able to see folks come in from outside and feel welcome and talk about us for months and months on end until the next time they come back. Yeah, it's something that people can save the date, put it on their calendars. It's a nice early fall event and really just a great time where people are not confined to one seat. I think you can't put a price tag on that, Craig, where people can just walk around freely and watch from a different venue every time. Yeah, I mean, if you want to sit at turn two as you come home from Phoebus and walk down the straightaways and catch a couple of heats that way and then go down to turn one and see that turn there, and if you want to go on the far side of the pits and watch from that side, I mean, you, like you said, you can get every vantage point that you want at our event. I mean, you can't say that at many other race courses. Absolutely. Talking to Craig Cole from the Hampton Cup Regatta. And, of course, uh, you mentioned it takes a team effort. I know you want to give a shout-out to some of your uh, fellow board members and volunteers. And, you know, you always have to uh, not always see eye-to-eye, but kind of all make it work that weekend. Yeah, I mean, uh, and that is one of the good things. I mean, nobody wants a yes-man. And we, we do not have anybody there. Sure. Sometimes our committee uh, discussions can get a little heated, but everybody is at, at the event at best at heart. And when you have those different perspectives, you 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 get a honest uh, feedback or a hot wash, I like to call it, after the event. And when we're building things, I mean, you, sometimes, I mean, not everybody has the, the all the answers. And when we have a strong team like we do, yeah, our event is all the more better for it. I mean, and, and like I said, I, I don't want to call anybody out in particular because there's so many and I don't want to leave somebody out. But if you want to go to our, um, 
our website. You'll see that listing the committee members and every one of those persons I am extremely proud of because I know they did their absolute best and to put off this event. Yep. Craig, give us the dates again for next year. 2019, the racing will be on September 21st and 22nd with our kickoff party, which will be at Oozle Finch Craft Brewery again on September the 20th. Very good. And we'll talk to you again sometime in the first quarter of 2019, kind of set our table for our interviews and everything else. All right. If I don't talk to you, Greg, you have a good holiday, a good holiday season. And we'll see you after the new year. Yep, thank you. And thank you to all the loyal listeners and people that came out and watched the Hampton Cup Regatta. Thank you, Craig. Thank you. Sports scene will continue. What tees you off? Presented by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. I want to thank our good friends at Buffalo Wild Wings, lunch, dinner, watch the World Series, college football, the NFL, great boneless traditional wings, excellent rollout menu. Go by and see Paul and the wonderful staff right there on Jefferson Avenue next to Patrick Henry Mall. Give them a call at 249-3999 for great lunch, dinner, late night, excellent food at Buffalo Wild Wings in Newport News next to Patrick Henry Mall. Joe Daniel, what tees me off? Chores, doing chores. I just don't like them. Or running errands. Yeah, I honestly like running errands. Uh, Chores, I hate chores, absolutely. But running errands, I actually kind of find that fun just to go from one place, accomplish something, then go to something else, accomplish something. And it just, I like to keep active in that sense. I don't like to just stay at home and just, okay, today is the day that I clean the home. I like to go out and as terrible as it sounds, I, I had to go to the DMV. But I went to the DMV, accomplished something. Then straight from the DMV, I went grocery shopping, accomplished something. Went to the post office, accomplished something. You know, so I like being able to handle these mini tasks by traveling. And you feel good about it once you put them on the list and you mark off that list. I do feel good about Precisely. it. Precisely. All right, losing a pen. It seems like we there's a million pens around, but we always lose that one pen. Yeah, and you never need the pen until it's lost, and then all of a sudden you just can't find it. Look, I've been married. I've been divorced. The term of separation, legal or not legal, you were separated a day ago, a month ago, a year ago. The whole term is vague. It is, yeah, because it is. It just means separated. It just means not together. you know. But there is a legal definition to it. But, I mean, how many people really know that or really even care? Right. People are emotionally and physically detached. That's- and you could be li- exactly what you said. You could be living in the same home under the same roof but still be emotionally separated. Right. You could be emotionally separated while you're married, folks. All right. House guests bringing way too much for one night. They're bringing all these bags for one night. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know some people like that where they just overpack. It's a, it's a weekend trip, literally two nights, and they have like three suitcases, one of them completely dedicated for just shoes. For an hour away, too. How about talking on the phone when you're having a person in your presence? There's nothing more that tees me off. You and I in the car together, I'm talking on the phone, or you're talking on the phone, or you're with your um, friend, and he's talking on the phone for an hour while y'all are just driving together. Yeah, I understand how business, you know, you need to take care of business, or whatever. Some, some things you need to handle in that moment and all that, but again, it is pretty rude to have somebody in close proximity at, like you said, in the car or on the uh, sitting across from you at a restaurant and you're on your phone. Putting grocery carts back in the proper place at the grocery store. You see them all over the sidewalk, the pavement, and of course the parking lot. I don't understand how people just don't. It, it re- That really teased me off. I don't understand how someone can just empty out their cart and just leave it right next to their car in taking up a parking space so somebody else can't pull into that parking space. They need to get out of their vehicle to move the cart that you should have put away to begin with. That is just selfish and it just really tees me off and just all you're concerned about is just yourself. It happens worse in the winter when you don't want to get out of your car in the first place. Lack of planning when people don't have a plan in place. Yeah, absolutely. Make a plan and get it, get it done as quickly as possible. Horror movies. I mean, the music is the worst thing. Halloween, we play it all the time, but I saw the movie. It's horrifying. It is. It's very scary. It's a classic. It's iconic. I love it. I recently saw it as well. It's, it's a wonderful movie. And people can relate to this in the fall with lotion and lubiderm, having that one itch that won't go away. Yeah. <laughs> and it, I have these sometimes itches like on the bottom of my feet sometimes. And it's just like, how, how is it even itchy down there? And of course, you, you can't unlace your shoe just to scratch that one part or the, the spot right in between your shoulder blades or something, a place you can't even reach. Or your back. That's what teased me off.
Want to thank our great guests today, Adam Winkler from Channel 3, Mick Mixon, the voice of the Carolina Panthers, and Craig Cole from the Hampton Cup Regatta. Great guest as well. For more, go to GJBTV.com. Hit the YouTube link. Subscribe to GJBTV.com on YouTube, at Greg Bick on Twitter, at GJB Radio on Twitter, and of course, be a favorite on TuneIn of Sports Scene. For Joe Daniel, I'm Greg Bickaveras. We'll talk to you soon.